What's up, YouTube? DK, we are back with another top 10 Final Fantasy toughest bosses of all time. Version 2. See, the thing is, I haven't played every Final Fantasy game when I made the last video. I still haven't played 1, 2, and 3, but I played the rest of them. And now I have a much different opinion on the top 10 hardest Final Fantasy bosses. I've got some to take off the list, and I've got some to add to the list. Before we get to the official list, let's talk about the honorable mentions because most of you are going to say, why isn't he on the list, or why isn't she on the list, or why isn't this on the list, this is hard, that's hard, this is hard, that was hard. Trust me, I have a good reason for not adding those guys to the official list, but I will post them in the honorable mentions, so let's get started. The first monster on the list for the honorable mentions is that big giant dinosaur thing in the in the extra dungeon in Final Fantasy IV Advance. This boss is going to kick your ass a few times, uh, but the thing is, it's a dragon. And most of your characters have weapons that do 9,000 to every dragon in the game. So with high agility, you'll beat him before he gets a chance to do his Mega Flare and stuff like that. So he's going to kick your ass a few times, but the fact that he's a dragon makes him kind of easy to beat. You can fight this thing as many times as you want to. And of course, the more you beat him, the easier he gets. The same thing goes for Neo Shimon Yu in Final Fantasy V Advance. Neo Shimon Yu is pretty fucking hard, but he's a dragon too. Stealing dragon lenses can be a pain in the ass, but with a little patience you'll get five or six of them. And just keep spamming jump and eventually you beat the son of a bitch. Uh, unfortunately, Neo Shimon Yu has these two little invisible target things which make him immune to damage sometimes is really really annoying. Uh, watch out for the Maelstrom Zombie Rev combination because that will fuck you over if you aren't protected from zombie. Uh, yes, Neo Shinyu definitely has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. When you beat him he uses Giga Flare and Meteor so... But if you got 6 Dragon Lances you will beat him eventually. It might take a few tries. Emerald and Ruby Weapon. Ah, oh, come on guys. You know these things aren't hard at all. Between Omni Slash Hunger Max, High Wind, Knights of the Round, Times for a Cut, and the uber powerful All Sevens, you beat these guys before they even get a turn. The very sad thing goes for a Mega Weapon in Final Fantasy VIII. Unfortunately for him, the limit breaks are very, very strong, especially Lionheart, Wishing Star, Duel, and um, Irving's gun thing. Not only that, but um, you see, there's an infinite loop. Limit Breaks take priority in Final Fantasy VIII just like they did in Final Fantasy VII. What this means is, if your characters have maximum speed, you can spend Limit Breaks over and over again, and he'll never get another turn. Eventually, he's gonna run out of HP. Now, you do need to stay on your toes because the make weapon is pretty damn fast. Not only that, but uh, he has an attack that does 16,000 to the whole group, so try to take him out before you get to that point, or use the Holy War for fuck's sake. Now, normally Nemesis would be pretty damn difficult, but uh, there's a thing called Auto Life. And conveniently, Riku can put it on the whole party. I love you, Riku, baby. <laughs> anyway, uh, all you have to do to win this fight is just spam Auto Life on the whole group and quick hit, and you'll be out of this before you know it. If this isn't working for you, just simply summon an Aeon whenever his turn is coming up. Now that we got this out of the way, let's get on with the official list. Well, maybe not official list, this is my list. Remember that. Some of you simply cannot defeat Long Gui. Do you know why? Because death doesn't work. Long Gu is a souped up version of the Adam Toys in Final Fantasy 13, and I mean souped up. The dude has 60 million HP and all kind of powerful attacks like Ultima, Quake, and that goddamn Roar attack. Not only that, but it takes a long, and I mean a long time to get all the best equipment in this game, and it also takes a very long time to level up, and that's assuming you can get your hands on the growth egg, and we'll talk about that later. Now, there are some of you who played 13-2 before playing 13-1. Do not be fooled. 
Lone Gooey is much, much, much more difficult in the first game than it was in the second game. In the second game, he is a complete pushover. In the first game, he's very hard to beat. Those of you who rely solely on death to defeat the Adamatoids, don't even think about challenging this guy, please. I know, I know, I know. Some of you are probably saying, what the fuck, DK? Number nine? Him? Well, here's the thing. Penis is really not that difficult of a super boss. It just takes a long time to beat him, and you need uber stats. But once you get all the best stuff, he's really kind of easy. If you spin a quick hit and attack reels, you can kill both the arms before they ever get a turn. Those of you who suck at Bliss Ball, then yeah, this guy is going to be pretty hard for you to beat. With the right equipment and a little help from Riku, his attacks can do less than 9,000. You don't need more than 9,999 hit points to beat this bastard. You don't need it. Watch out for his turns, dispel the armor break, spam a quick hit and attack reels, and you'll kill him before you know it. Keep in mind that the arms are very, very dangerous, especially the left arm. You cannot let those arms get a turn. If those arms get a turn, you have a 90% chance of losing this fight. So there's no room for error. And of course, some of you are too damn lazy to beat him the hard way, so you're gonna use a model. I'm pretty sure this one doesn't need any introduction. When this game first came out, there were millions of questions on the internet about how to beat this cheap ass boss. Everybody said the same thing. Use death for fuck's sake. Use death to beat this boss. If you decide to beat this boss without using death, this is probably the hardest boss in Final Fantasy. Unless you get lucky with the quick stacking. The thing is, most of us wanted to beat this guy as soon as possible because it is the only way to get the growth egg. And at that point, the only way to beat him is with death. But unfortunately, it doesn't always work. At best, I think you got like maybe a 6 or a 10% chance to kill the bastard with death. And you've only got about 5 rounds to do it. The fact that 95% of you are going to kill this bastard with death is the reason why he's number 8 and not number 3.
Some people argue that Neo Shimmyu is the hardest monster in Final Fantasy V. I bet you differ. I say Omega and Omega Mark II. They are both equally hard. Why? Because they kill you faster than any monster in that game. The main issue with Omega is the fact that he has Wave Cannon. For those of you who don't know what it does, it does exactly 50% of your health and it drains your health over a period of time. That means if this bastard does Wave Cannon two times in a row before he can heal, you're gonna die. And that will happen a lot because he's very, very, very fast. Not only that, but you practically have to kill the guy in one attack. Otherwise, he kind of attacks like 10 times, wiping out the party. The only way to do that is to exploit his weakness and hit him with rapid fire. Now, Omega Mark 2 is just as hard as the regular one, but the thing is, you need to take time to find out what he's weak to. And by then, he might have wiped you out. You're gonna get a lot of game modes fighting these guys. Make sure that you take time to level up your Mystic Knight and your Archer so you can learn Rapid Fire and Spell Blade because beating these guys without it is practically impossible. Gilgamesh may have been a pushover before, but in 13-2, he is the second hardest monster to beat in the entire game. I have three major issues with this one. The first is the fact that Gilgamesh constantly dispels your buffs. It's really, really annoying when he does that. The second issue is the fact that he's pretty damn smart. Anytime you stagger him, he will automatically start using an attack that causes pain on one of your attackers. Now you can protect yourself from pain, but if you do that, you'll lower your attack. And if you do that, you might not be strong enough to take him out before he transforms into a Super Saiyan. Once Gilgamesh recovers from a stagger, he uses the Regen Sword, which recovers 1 million HP. Once his HP reaches below 5 million, he does this. At this point, it's very difficult to beat him. Now it's very possible to take him out before he transforms into this enhanced power thing, but thanks to that damn pain attack, it's not easy to do. Now most bosses actually let you switch the paradigms so you can switch your three systems and block the super attacks. Gilgamesh does not.
that pain is definitely going to get in your way. So either put your painkillers on top or make sure that you're 100% protected from it. It's very possible to beat him during this stage, but it's not easy. Proto Bay Bill returns as number 5. I didn't talk about him too much on the last list, so let's try this again. His basic attack does 9000 even if you have adamant armor. You practically need brace to survive this thing. He randomly counterattacks anything you do with a laser that does 4000 to the entire party. As if that shit wasn't bad enough, when his hit points gets low, he counterattacks with Globe 199, instantly killing one target. But wait, it gets worse. He starts spamming his Bula attack, Divine Judgment. Good luck at beating this bastard. Ah uh, yes, Yazamet. We all know about this one, right? The fact that it takes you at least 1-5 to five hours to beat the Son of Bitch is bad enough. But that's not what makes him a hard boss. The only thing that makes Yazamet a somewhat difficult boss is that fucking death hit. I don't know the exact percentage of it, but the death hit will screw you over. As if Death Strike wasn't bad enough. Fortunately, as I said in the last video, you can run away from the fight, return, and continue where you left off, and you won't recover any HP. The fight is somewhat easy until you get to the growing threat stage. At that point, you're going to get KO'd over and over again, and it's a matter of luck whether you beat him or not. In case you haven't figured it out by now, yes, I'm still a little shaky from 13-2's ending. I almost cried. Literally. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. Number 3. Foolish children of man. The crime you commit is grievous indeed. stand as equals when they receive their ultimate judgment. Only the most powerful is chosen to pass the sentence. Your sins, your eminence. Such hubris to think you could challenge me. Drown in seas of blood, writhe in infernal flame, and suffer eternal torment. Your punishment awaits! No, 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 not level 1. There we go. Level 99 Valfoda. This bastard is hard. Valfoda has 5 levels. Level 1, level 15, level 45, level 70, and level 99. During the first 4 levels, he summons monsters to help him. They can't be a nuisance. 
during the final level, he doesn't summon any monsters. I think. Just like Yazmet, things get really ugly when he's about to lose. And he starts spamming his brutal attack. He has an attack pattern, but he hits like a truck. Don't even think about China's fight without three Sentinels. Alright guys, we are down to the final two bosses. This is a very, very, very tough decision to make. So here we go. The number two most difficult boss. Oh yes, you already know where we're going with this one. Unfortunately, some of you had never fought this boss before because you got your ass handed to you by the other Drake and you quit playing. This thing was not included in my last video and everyone was like, what the fuck DK, where's Chak? Well the thing is, prior to making that video, I only fought Chak a few times and only after doing my LP, I realized that it was pure luck because THIS BITCH IS FUCKING HARD! She hits like a truck. She can turn into stone even if you are immune to it. She has a very powerful group attack. And she has 400,000 HP. This is one of those bosses where you need a specific setup to beat her. You need a setup completely dedicated to beat this bitch. But here's the thing. After you somehow beat her on level 80, guess what? She starts appearing in random battles for the next three levels. That means you have to be ready to beat this bitch at all times. The only problem with this is, sometimes you fight an Elder Drake, a Black Elemental, Mushroom Cloud, and all kind of other cheap monsters down here. You have to be cheap to beat this boss. Either spam Catnip Gunner Mode, Lady Luck Flinching, or bribe the bitch for who knows how many gil. Oh, and did I forget to mention that you can only get the Lady Luck just fit from a spear break? Which sucks major boss for those of you who aren't good at math. A lot of people recommend that you always hold this bitch before fighting her on level 80, but you still have to fight her in random battles from level 81 through 84. If you try to fight this bitch without being extremely cheap, this is the hardest battle in Final Fantasy, without a doubt. And now the moment has finally arrived, the number one boss in Final Fantasy. Those of you who saw my last video, by now you already know who it is. But some of you are also saying, but wait a minute, there's another boss that should be there, but there's only one spot left. So what gives? That's the thing guys, we have a tie for number one. Yes, we have a tie for number one. Let's start with the one you already know about.
as I said before, these are not the same judges from the main game. They have all been completely souped up. I've already said everything I need to say about these guys in the last video, even though some of you probably couldn't understand me. So I'll make a long story short. Simply spamming reverse is not going to work in this battle. These guys do not waste any time. You've only got about 20 seconds to get this fight under your control. Once they start kicking your ass, you might as well just stay down. Because they're going to keep knocking you down over and over again. Simply making it to this fight is a feat on its own. Then, once you enter the fight, you have to be ready to take them down immediately. If you don't act fast, you're simply going to get obliterated and there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. So, why do we have a tie, you ask? Well, here's the thing. Unfortunately, 80% of you watching this video have never fought the five judges. Why? Because it is an international exclusive. Unlike Final Fantasy X, it is currently only available in Japanese unless you're good at patching it on your computer. But for one reason or another, some of you are unable to do that. This fight alone is reason enough to buy the international version. But unfortunately, most of you have never played it. So, if you don't got the five judge magisters, this is the hardest battle in Final Fantasy. I didn't even get a fucking turn! Do I really need to show you anything else? What the fuck were they thinking when they created this boss? This thing has completely unfair turns. Any action you take automatically instantly fills his active time gauge. Curse is a bitch. Especially considering the fact that there doesn't appear to be a way to block many in this game. When he's about to lose, he counterattacks with Karaja. But the bane of this fight is that fucking meteor attack. It does random damage, but in most cases, it will wipe you out completely. Ozma is not stupid. He won't use certain spells if you are completely immune to it. Which means it increases the chances of him using Meteor. Okay. So you got all the life. You come back with one fucking hit point and then uses Curse on the very next turn. Now I know the friendly creatures makes this fight a little easier, but it doesn't save you from Meteor. This fight is solely luck based. Your victory is never guaranteed. Sometimes you will fight this guy and you will die before you even get a turn. No boss in Final Fantasy will have you staring at the game over screen more than Ozma.